Magandang umaga. Good morning, my friends, and welcome back to another video here in the beautiful country of the Philippines. Here with the bro again, traveling around this place. And uh, in today's video, guys, we're going to be uh, taking a flight to one of the smallest airports in all of the Philippines from Caticlan here, you're just off the coast of uh, Boracay, over to the tiny, tiny little airport of El Nido. So we're taking a uh, about a 150 peso ride to get us over to the ferry port. If you saw a video a couple days ago, we I took the uh, plane, then ferry, then another means of transportation. So it's a bit of a journey to get over there. We've got the flight in about uh, one hour and 15 minutes. So it's gonna be coming pretty quick, or maybe two hours and 15 minutes to be exact. And so we should make it just in time. Luckily, we're going to a very small airport so you can cut it close. Uh, the one in Katiklan where we'll fly out from. But uh, yeah, this was a very quick trip to uh, Boracay. Beautiful place, a lot more to explore. I'm definitely gonna come back and show you way more of this island. But unfortunately, I'm on a pretty tight itinerary. So we shall be back, Boracay. Until next time. All right, Kuya, we've arrived. A special drop-off spot for us. Magkano, Kuya? 100, sir. 100? Uh, do you have change, brother? Do you have change? Small uh, dinner, sir. I only have uh, 100 for small. Do you have 50, bro? I have 50, yeah. Okay. I'm going to let Salamat Kuya. Alright, we have made it to the ferry port. Honestly, so much more efficient just getting your own transportation. Like we did. Oh, there's me. My friend's name. My friend's name, yeah, thanks. Salamat. Alright guys, and we are here at the ferry port. What I was saying though is the uh when I got the uh package transportation from the airport a few videos ago, it took so long and it honestly was not cheaper at all. I paid like $20 or 1,000 pesos and I had to wait for people and like drop other people off at their hotels and it was really, really inefficient. Like this transportation cost me only 150. So like uh, three US dollars to go there uh, and I didn't have to stop at other people's hotels. So like just keep that in mind if you're not in a rush, like the package transport is just like the simplest without like talking to people but it's also going to take you the most amount of time. So if you're limited on time like I was, I definitely uh, regret doing that. Kamosta ka? Oh, we're going to do this way? Salamat. All right. Oh, they want to send us this way here. It looks like the tourist way. <laughs> you gotta stop, you gotta put us at the gift shop, bro. Make sure we buy something before we leave. Kamosta ka? We are going to take one moment to pause today's video, guys, and share with you our sponsor for today's video, which is Nomad eSIM. Nomad eSIM solves a massive problem for me. Let me just tell you, in the first 24 hours, whenever I arrive to a new country, I spend time figuring out how is my cell phone going to work, where am I going to find a SIM card, and is this a reliable service provider? Well, that's all changed ever since Nomad eSIM came into play. Now when I'm sitting here in my office planning for the next trip, booking my hotel, planning my flights, I'm also able to pull out my phone, hop on the Nomad eSIM app, find exactly which country I'm going to, a phone plan that works for me depending on the amount of gigs I would like, then I can purchase it right here. So when I'm flying and landing directly in the country that I'm going to, I get off the plane and I'm already connected. So that's a big thing for me. One, because of time efficiency, that's for sure. Number two is my US plan that I have. I pay like $80 per month, plus like a $10 per day international plan fee, which as you can imagine, traveling for almost the entire month every time I'm traveling, that adds up very quickly. So it's efficient and it is saving money for me. And so that is why Nomad eSIMs has been a game changer for me as a traveler. So if you guys wanna get your first eSIM and save some money doing it, head down to the link in the description below. You'll actually get $3 off your first purchase and you'll be connected on your next trip. Thank you so much, back to the video. And this looks like the entrance. Right into here. Wow, okay, so. We've got to find ourselves a ferry. Let's see here. Malai Tourism One Day Transaction. Boat ticket. Airport transfer over here, bro. All right. Kataklan Airport Transfer. Good morning. Um, okay, sir. So, last okay, uh, Yes, please. Two tickets to Kataklan. All right, bro. I'm getting them here. 
Bayad ng terminal fee, sir. Terminal fee, yeah. Uh, 150 and both tickets. Oh, two, two things, yeah? Yes, sir. Oh, wow. That's good money. Good morning, sir. Wow. All right. So it looks like we've got to uh, pay for two. So we pay uh, terminal fee and then we pay Katiklan airport transfer fee. Oh, can I grab that pen right there? Oh, thank you. Kesa lang ako magguwa ng biro na abong kwarta mo labang magguwa ang kaya bayaran ko lang. Alam mo sa burot balik bayan. Oh, ng dunet lang ako sa province room. Magkano ate? Three hundred. Three hundred. All right. Salamat ate. It's my sponsor. We give these to you or to the next one? Salamat ate. Thank you very much. Very efficient. Komostaka <laughs> kuya. We need uh, two tickets to Kati Clan, please. 360. Yeah, the airport. Gotta put this right there. Boarding in five minutes. All right, we're done here. Salamat kuya. All right. So these are the uh, tickets, custom made right there. All right, port boarding pass. And all departures must present this. All right, salamat ate. Thank you. Which ones can I give you? All right. We're good to go, yeah? Sir, I will ask this All right. Oh, so we got ourselves a tricycle from the uh, Cataclan port to the airport. Perfect. So guys, just so you know, per person, 150 for the uh, port fee here, which is about three bucks. And then another three for the ferry fee, which I guess includes a tricycle here. Salamat ate. Thank you, salamat. And so, yeah, about $6 per person for us to get back, plus the 150 to take the tricycle over here. So comes out to about, yeah, $9 per person. Uh, not too bad, or about actually $7.50 since the shared tricycle was 150. So not too bad. And as you guys can see, if you're watching this video, how much faster it is when we're not going through that booked company. Uh, we got people around the world right here and sadly all of us leaving this way. Komosta kakuya. Okay lang? Okay lang. Oh, perfect. Hello, hello, komosta ka. All right, they're telling us enjoy the beach on the way out. Well, we missed the beach already. Ah! Go, 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 go! Above the Kurt. The Kurt? Yep. So we're gonna be hopping on MB Kurt. How do you know that, bro? This thing. Oh, so, oh, you got the uh, MB Kurt seat 44 ticket. Did they just give you one or two? Two. Oh, sweet. All right, it's the uh, Bridge of Doom. All right, so we're gonna film this while going across. We're either going in or we're not. Two outcomes. And there we go. Oh, it's a pretty nice pathway across. Oh, Salamat Kuyas. All right, and we're on. Whoa, it's harder to walk on the ferry than it is on the bridge, I'll say. A much different ferry than we took to get here, but it seems a little more spacious. We can just toss the luggage here. All right, and a quick ferry ride. We have made it. We are, oh, and we're moving forward on the boat still. Bit of a uh, queue to get off here, but uh, I think we only have just a quick eight minute ride, I wanna say six minute ride to go from here to the airport. Salamat, Captain Kuya. All right, we've got a bit of a uh, bottleneck getting off here. Salamat, the ca assistant captain. All right, gotta cross this thing here. All right, and we are making it right across here. We have made it safely. Another ferry successfully made. Uh, welcome, brother. Anong pangalang mo, kuya? Anthony, sir. Anthony, nice to meet you, Anthony. My name is Mac. Where do we find the uh, tricycles? There, sir. Okay, salamat, thank you. He looked over at me, he's like, hello, welcome to my channel, please subscribe to me. <laughs> We got uh, two persons. Are you going to be taking us on this? Right here? 
Two persons. Yeah. Oh. Salam, ma. All right, we got the little uh, the little cruiser here. Oh, that's a big little. There, one, is, one, is, one, is. one, one there, one there. All right. All right. So me and the bro are getting the uh, the motorcycle that's been turned into a mini car. I'd say this is so much more efficient. We hopped off and immediately got on this. I'm just obviously guys in this video doing a bit of a comparison because probably some of you that watched my first video think like you know maybe the way that I took was the best way on the way there but it was so much less efficient like I'm, I'm doing everything in like 10% of the time maybe 30% of the time let's say it's more accurate but um, yeah otherwise we would have waited for one of those big buses and when you wait for the big bus there's literally like 30 or 40 people that are gonna hop right on come on the car Okay, Long! Got a nice little bar to hang on there. All right, and then we're riding to the Boracay Airport. Got a little market leading up to it right here too. Snacks, bags, uh, departures. That's one facility, one terminal, Cebu Pacific Air Asia. And then we've got the other one, I think just right up here. Air Swift, that's yeah. us. All right. Salamat Kuya. Salamat. Oh. Trip for you, brother. You. Salamat. All right, we got the uh, world's biggest uh, departure lodge right here. 789 counters. All right. This one we need to check. Right, we got the uh, bag tagged. Hopefully, we see that right over there in El Nido. How many uh, seats are there on the plane? Uh, 48 seats and all okay. 48 seats. All right, perfect. Almost. Thank you. Would you like to check in the box? Oh, uh, I can just take it. Since we are almost full. That's up to you. Okay. If you want to take it, yeah, sure. All right. Doubling down. All right, we got a nice big red tag on there showing that it's fragile. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. All right. Oh, that's perfect. When you're in El Nido, it's just not far away for your for oh, car, for so it's just... Uh, okay, salamat ate. We're uh, heading over this way to see what type of food we've got going on here. They pulled us over on the uh, rice meals there. Oh, yeah. Oh, so you got all the good stuff here, yeah? Yeah. Fish fillet, spicy Thai chicken, good pork, pepper steak, mm. and Thai chicken. Yeah. All right, I'm going to do a chicken. quick lap over there, bro, and see what else they have. All right. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna do a quick lap over here and see. Como te cuyo, ates? Very good. All right, on this side, what do we've got going on? Fresh lemonades, it looks like. Fresh lemonades, chocolate muffins. All right, this might be the one. Or vanilla cream frappes. Yeah, that's great. And then over there, multi purpose little gift shop, it looks like. All right. We shall see what's going to be the good stuff then. Looks like this is more of just a cafe, maybe. Chocolate muffin. All right. I'm thinking a, a chocolate muffin's got my name on it. You need some uh, pesos, brother? I think, yeah. Oh, I have it. Right. Thank you. Yep. Como esta ca, Ate? Oh, very good. Uh, can I please have uh, one iced latte? One iced latte. Yep. One size or large size at all? Uh, let's go with the uh, the large one today, yeah? And then are those uh, dark chocolate muffins good, Ate? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. All right. Exactly. Ayos and Maserat? Yes, Maserat. Oh, Maserat. <laughs> okay, perfect. Anong Kwang along Langmo? Jovelin. Jovelin. Oh, nice to meet you, Jovelin. Nice to meet you, too. And uh, Magkano, Ate? Uh, one dark chocolate muffin, Yep. Would you like to make it warm the Uh, Oh, warm? Oh, yes, please. That's the best way to have it, yeah? Also, sir, 343. 343, okay. Airport prices. Uh, we've got uh, only a 1,000 that's going to be able to make it happen. Uh, sir, and that's Thank you. We have two pesos, sir. Two pesos? We've got a five spot there. 
Thank you. Uh, salamat, salamat, Ate. Thank you, Jovelin. Oh yeah, looks like this is where the uh, magic happens for those iced coffees right here. That is gonna be delicious. Also, we got it looks like two shots of espresso just mixing in straight up with that milk. Oh, that looks fantastic. Oh, that's for me. Salamat. Oh, thank you. Oh, that was very quick. All right, let's, I think that's the right size straw. A little paper straw here, and let's test it out. We gotta give it a proper mix here, yeah? Check that out. Okay, get this thing going. Wow. All right, that is Mazarab. Salamat, thank you very much. Okay, we found the bro over here. Coffee and a chocolate. Oh! Uh, coffee and a chocolate muffin here. All right, and this is a. Uh, very tiny airport. You definitely can't get lost here. I can tell you guys I'm going to be wired after this coffee because I said I put two shots of espresso in here. But it's definitely what I need to uh, wake up right now. And of course, not yet ready for lunch, but uh, definitely a uh, warm chocolate muffin is going to take the edge off right there. What do you think, bro? You want a bite? I'm alright. Dang, bro. You're missing out. Alright. Mmm. Wow. Let me tell you, that is rich in chocolate. You can see all those little chocolate chips in there. Just melting. So when you take a bite out of it, you can just feel that oozy chocolate right in your mouth. Not the freshest muffin I've ever had, but definitely uh, pretty good. Pretty good. I would give this one like a 6 out of 10. Far from the best, but also far from the worst. Quite delicious. Mm -mm -mm. All right, we're taking the uh, Air Swift flight straight to El Nido. Bus number five. Thank you. All right, bus number five. That is us right here. Bigger plane than I expected to be flying straight to El Nido. Come on, Takakuya. Okay, Lang? Okay, Lang. All right, bro. We All made right. it. Yeah. All right, we're taking down the bus down the uh, tarmac right here. Feels like the uh, bus is about to take off. But I guess where we load up on the planes are over there. That just goes to show you how small the airport is. It's going to be a rainy one today taking off. Salamat. Number eight. Number eight. Oh, thank you very much. Salamat. All right, they're hooking us up with the uh, umbrellas. Good Get on. Hello, Hi, come sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. All right, small little plane here. Good wow. Afternoon. Definitely one of the smallest commercial-sized planes I've been on. All right, guys, we are taking off now. It looks like on the uh, prop plane. Nice small little plane. With the bro. <laughs> Bros that travel together stay together. Alright guys, 45 minutes to El Nido. Let's go. Alright, we are now up in the air and a little bit further outside of the island area. It's a much clearer day, so hopefully we'll get some better weather once we arrive in El Nido. Alright, looks like we're getting close to uh, El Nido. It's a bit uh, cloudy in this area, but a uh, string of islands all along here. This looks pretty amazing to explore. Oh, in the clouds now. It's a pretty hazy day, guys. And the uh, windows aren't super clean, but you can imagine how beautiful of a uh, flight in this would be if it was uh, clear skies. You can slightly see the tint of the uh, watercolor. It looks like it's super blue, which gives you that island vibes feel. But at least flying in, you don't really see that much development on this area. Like, there's just a couple houses sprinkled in the mountains. And aside from that, at least this side of El Nido is pretty, pretty untouched. Obviously, it's going to be a completely different experience than when we were in Boracay. And now we're starting to see some more like occupied areas on the beach. It honestly, looks like we're about to land right there on the beach. Oh, a huge pier right there that leads out. 
look at that, the airport literally borders the beach, that's crazy. Thank you, Salamat. Salamat. All right, El Nido, we have arrived. This is it. What a small little airport here. Got the red carpet walking out though. Got the red carpet, bro. They had a, they had a special welcoming. They knew the bro was coming. All right. Wow, yeah. So that's the entire departures terminal. That's the entire arrivals. And uh, we just uh, brought with us 100% of the planes at the airport. Yeah, I think we're literally the only plane here. So, quick little 45 minute flight on the uh, prop plane. So guys, this is where we are. We're on the island of Palawan. Oh, and you can see where El Nido is. There's a tiny little airport in El Nido. A lot of people think that you can only fly into, I think, Porto Princesa, but if you do that, it's literally a four hour drive to get here. So that's why if you fly into El Nido, like we did, just to get to the town center, it's a 15 minute drive. All right, located the bag. Got it, bro? All right. Now it is time to head to El Nido. This is literally the entire arrivals terminal. And somewhere out here, is directly to the parking lot. Yeah, my brother was just telling me that this airport is owned by the airline and it only flies to four cities and not too long ago is actually a uh, gravel area. So it's uh, kind of cool to think that. That's probably why a lot of people don't realize that El Nido Airport exists. Oh, bro, we got the sign right there with your name on it. Mm -hmm. All right, our buddy's got the uh, bags. Anong pangalang mo kuya? Jake, sir, Jake. Jake? Yeah. Uh, nice to meet you, Jake. Jake's helping us out, getting us over to the Kuna Hotel where we're going to be staying. I'll just take the car. Oh, so, oh salamat. Alright, so as you guys can see, we only walked from there to here. And we're already to the pickup point. Just goes to show you literally how tiny this airport is. It's by far the smallest airport. I've even uh, been in some private airports in the United States before. And I would say this is an even smaller airport than a private airport. And it's commercial here. Alright, Jake's got us a uh, van right here. This whole van's for us, Jake? Oh, this one's ours. Uh, salamat. Yeah. Oh, guys, the airport has doubled in amount of planes there since we arrived. And by that, I mean there's a second plane in the small little terminal. This is the uh, parking lot right here. So we've got some vans and a couple uh, places in the trees to park the motorbikes. And that's the uh, entire airport. On the other side, it looks like there's a helicopter and a couple, like maybe one or two private planes. But I think I wrote that, that airport is only serviced by three planes. Three planes total. Yeah. Wow. From like five different cities. That is insane. Yeah. Just goes to show how small of an airport. Salamat Kuyas. <laughs> and the airport is owned by that airline, Air Swift. Air Swift. Yeah, they dominate this entire airport. That's what I'm saying. That it makes sense now why some Filipinos that aren't even aware of this airport uh, had told me that there wasn't an airport in El Nido because it's such a small one. All right, so we've got, I think, probably uh, just over 10 minutes to get us to the hotel here. And we're gonna get a nice little look into the outskirts of the tourist area in El Nido. It seems like we've got rickshaws for transportation, lots and lots of motorbikes around here. And kind of like what we saw in Boracay. You know, outside of the uh, main tourist area, you find a lot of shops from barbers to local restaurants, local markets, little convenience stores, and a fair amount of construction happening. All right, looks like we're entering into uh, El Nido Town Center. All right. Jake's giving us the initial tour through here. <laughs> How many people live in El Nido? probably in the greater El Nido area. Looks like a cool little town center over here. Some street food right there. Mm -mm -mm. And we're here? Yeah. Oh, sweet. Right at the uh, 
edge of town there. Those are our neighbors, the El Nido apartments. All right, this is our place. Kamosta ka? Good afternoon. Thank you. All right, so cool little uh, trendy place when we walk in. Look that brook, look. Last name, Candy. Yeah, guys, so we took the, uh, the ride here with our buddy Jake, and that was, uh, came out to 1,000 Filipino pesos, which is like $18, so it's yeah. definitely one of the most expensive means of transportation when you book it through the hotel. So probably on our way back, what we'll do is we'll book like directly on our own, because obviously if you're paying for the service, you know, you're paying for the, you're paying for the service of someone else booking, which means, you know, the hotel's getting their cut from it, so. Yeah, I mean, the nice part is it was efficient, but you'll pay significantly more, probably like 60-70% higher in prices. Alright, so we are heading up to the room. Oh, yes, please. I offer. Can I Oh, it's okay, I got it. Thank you. Welcome to Konyang. Salama ta'ate. We're excited to be here. We're excited to be here. Yeah, thank you so much. You're welcome. Alright. Well, it smells very good when we walk in. Mmm. Cool design of this place. Looks like we're in a uh, log cabin here. With some uh, wooden stumps as the side table. How's the view look, bro? Good, we got a cliff in the background. Alright, sweet. We're up in the, uh, up in the volcanic mountains. Some pretty cool looking uh, places we're going to be exploring while we're here. Perfect. Oh, whatever you want, bro. Yeah, pretty basic room, but uh, you know, nice overall. Comfortable, good air conditioning, and inside here, bathroom looks nice. Fresh uh, towels and shower there. Looks like we got some uh, drinking water and all the amenities. Decent water pressure. Yeah, looks like a great place. Enjoy, bro. All right, guys, we are walking through the uh, El Nido Town Center. Guys, unfortunately, the uh, GoPro battery is dead, and I didn't realize it. But uh, we just walked probably like three, four minutes and we're at the El Nido beach right here. And you can see from that stretch where the cliffs are, just right here are the whole like beachfront areas. So oh, we've got a tight little area. Cars are coming through here. What do we think for a walk down? So it looks like we're limited from this side. Tide's pretty high today, probably from the rain coming in. Come on, the cuyo. Okay. okay. But yeah, what a cool place. Well, I guess that's an expectation to have when coming to the islands. We're already getting rain down here. So I didn't even think this was the rainy season, but I guess you can expect that on the islands just with the tropical weather. That at least for a portion of the day, a lot of the times you're going to see at least a bit of, uh, a bit of the uh, rain coming down. But it's cool. The nice part about El Nido, it's a bit cozier than let's say Boracay. I mean, the El Nido area stretches from right there all the way to there. So you can walk from one end to the other in probably less than 10 minutes. And the tide is high. Wow. <laughs> the tide is getting very high. Oh, this one's coming all the way up. I can feel it. Yeah, I'm like, I'm surprised that uh, it makes it. It, erodes, it would erode the same other foundation. Yeah. Exactly. I'm going to have to run across after this one. I forgot to switch my shoes, guys. I'm wearing the uh, the flip flops. All right, I'm wearing the uh, the full-on shoes. You can see. Oh. <laughs> now we know. Next time, bring out the uh, flip flops, the sandals. El Nido, the center. We got one shipwreck right there too. So, guys, a bunch of cool little like plazas right here. Restaurants in the back. We've got the. Uh, a cool little carving right here on the uh, on the design. Fun beers. Oh, look at this modern hotel right up there. Such a vibe. You can see all these places just right along the uh, the coast here. Crepes, coffee, milk tea. Oh yeah, they're definitely uh, serving to all the tourists over here with the different options that they've got. All right, guys, we've got the next distance. I jumped up at the exact time. <laughs> we got to make it all the way to the next base. Oh, I have nowhere to go now. All right. 
Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is me the whole way on the beach. <laughs> All right. So this is like, seems like the main area for the boats. We've got a whole bunch out here just kind of bopping around. My brother and I were just so shocked that like the tide right now, I'm sure like it's at one of its highest points, but it's just absolutely smashing against these buildings. You'd think it would have such an incredible impact or destructive impact, not incredible, but like incredibly destructive. I mean, impact on these buildings. So I'm just wondering if they must uh, face some serious construction issues all along the coast here. We've got the bro walking along the, uh, the dock here, the warpy dock. Whoa, it warps when you walk. Guys, we just uh, walked over this way and now looking up here, it is such an incredible view. I mean, even though we've got like this odd contrast of like dark gray clouds, but you just see those cliffs that have these like really, really steep uh, inclines to them along with like greenery at the top. Just such an exotic look. Definitely similar to my brother made a good reference. Halong Bay in Vietnam. Also somewhat similar to like Koh Phi Phi area in Thailand. You know, kind of like a hybrid of those two, but in their own Filipino format. So it's uh, such a beautiful part of the world here. Kamostaka! Okay, Long! All right, there we go. We got a smile out of you. <laughs> That's good. All right, we've made it to the end here. Got a mix of pretty much every type of boat around here from kayaks to looks like this Kaiyuan Three Island Resort. So that's probably the fast track to get you from here to wherever that resort is. Weaving you in and out of those smaller little islands over there. But yeah, this is such a cool island. Landscape wise, it's so, so different from Boracay. Well, honestly, in so many ways, it's completely different from Boracay. I mean, it was a 45 minute flight to get here. So you can imagine it's pretty far away. All right, there's the dock, the local gas station here, and that's kind of the end here. It seems like there's some like local accommodation or, oh, that's Port Authority there. All at the end here, and obviously can't build too much more there because we've got the cliffs. But that leads us kind of to the tourist center, I would assume, right over here. The uh, interesting part about El Nido is like every place I've been to so far in the Philippines has their own uh, unique style of like vehicles to get around. So these little motorcycles actually have like the front fender of what looks to be a car. This one says Nissan on it. And they all have named them. Double M2, that's a Mitsubishi front, Komotaka. And yeah, it's so cool. Someone had mentioned that to me when I was in Manila that like each place you're gonna find like a unique type of vehicle in all the places you go in the Philippines. Like this one right here, it's like a, uh, a Mazda motorbike here, right? Like it's all, you can tell it's all completely custom made. And you've got like a, uh, I'm not sure what type of bike that is, but basically you weld all that on there and you've got room to uh, take a couple passengers and their luggage. So that's uh, definitely a, a really unique and uh, fun part to see in these places. One thing my brother and I have noticed is that uh, there's a lot of Korean signage all over El Nido, so they must attract quite a few uh, Korean tourists to this area. Oh, we got laundry service here too. Uh, we've got the uh, district right here. Mazarab food here? Yes. Yeah, all right, perfect. We came to the right place then. All right. Salamat, ates, and kuyas. Yeah, perfect. We'll take this one here. Get a little people watching from here. Yeah. Oh. Got some uh, delicious food here. Anong pangalang mo kuya? Patrick. Patrick, all right, Patrick. So, uh, by the way, is so far so good, yeah? Yes. Oh, okay, that's a great quote. Uh, can I please have the uh, beef pho? Same for me. Nice. The bro knows the good stuff to get. I followed his lead on that. Too big pa. Yeah. And then, uh, can I please have a uh, mango fresh juice, please? Two Salama. Mango. Uh, two mango fresh juice, please. Anything else, sir? Uh, anything for you, bro? Uh, that's it. All right, just okay, that. Order, sir, two beef pie and two mango fresh. Maybe a bottle of water as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. two bottles of water, please. Right. Salamat. So, guys, this is the uh, restaurant here. It's a really nice vibe, like murals all on the inside, a nice bar modern look here kind of like a cement industrial look mixed with that kind of like you know bali islandy type of feel the ropes the spice up your life quotes and then like at the very back this must turn into a party place at night because you got the uh, dj deck and a massive speaker there so yeah cool area right across from here we've got a, a hostel and then kuna that is the hotel we are staying at i think we chose kuna because it was like a pretty decent priced hotel 
Uh, I will say we didn't spend like a tremendous amount of time trying to find like the most inexpensive place or anything. We kind of just picked one and uh, you know, something with uh, decent looking accommodations on the uh, photos and decent Wi-Fi. So yeah guys, now we've got a few minutes till the uh, food comes. We've got the uh, fresh mango shakes delivered here. Let's test them out. Ice cold, there's no better feeling than when you're like walking around, kind of soaked from the rain, very humid outside in the evening, and then just take a nice sip, and a mango iced up smoothie here. Mm. Just cools down the internal body temperature so much. Delish, my friends. All right, we got ourselves some uh, delish pho right here. Let's go ahead and test this out. Fresh out of the uh, stove. Mm, mm, mm. Oh yeah. Nothing like some juicy meat inside of that soupy flavor on an evening. But I think we gotta do the uh, Filipino classic where you go ahead and uh, squeeze that in there. Get some of the uh, pepper chopped up. Get those juices mixed in. Add that into the soup. Minus the seeds. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, as you can see, uh, really, really good uh, quality overall. Nice presentation. Vegetables taste and look really fresh. Oh, no, I haven't had a bite of the noodles yet, so let's test those out. Oh yeah, that is super tasty. A nice soft noodle there. And, oh yeah, carrots and a little mix of everything. I like it though guys, really good Vietnamese food. Didn't expect to have this in uh, El Nido. That just shows you an idea of all the different cuisine options that you're able to find uh, on this small little island right here. Mm -mm. Mm. So guys, for us to have two uh, mango shakes and a beef pho, it comes out to about 1,176, which is roughly 20 US dollars, maybe about 21 US dollars for uh, me and the bro to have some uh, delicious food at a uh, nice and modern restaurant. So really nice meal, heading back to the hotel. All right, here it is. We just have a uh, short walk back to Kuna. Here we are. All right guys, so that was our first uh, day exploring or just a very brief day exploring most of the uh, transportation in this video to get to El Nido. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. So thank you so much for watching. So if you guys want to get your first eSIM and save some money doing it, head down to the link in the description below. You'll actually get $3 off your first purchase and you'll be connected on your next trip. Thank you so much. Back to the video.